And, and so for various reasons one did to distance myself from the church. And if I was going to do the Christian thing of witnessing or whatever, trying to reach people, I realised I'm not going to do it as part of any Christian organisation. I'm going to go out into the world on my own and, and, and like that. Um, but this was also around the same time that I was actually becoming more uh, more inclined towards mixing Christianity with paganism. Um, I got very interested in astrology and particularly the writings of, of Linda Goodman. Um, I think she's full of shit now, but um, <laughs> um, I was uh, very much into her books and uh, I kind of constructed a form of paganism around astrology almost. But it was all very messy and making it myself sort of a thing anyway. Um, I would sometimes refer to the wind and the rain, the storminess of the atmosphere, uh, personified as Thor, <laughs> the Norse god of thunder. Uh, when I felt like complaining about the wind or something, <laughs> I was going, Thor! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> um, but, uh, Yes, but I also, you know, with regards to the planetary associations of the various astrological signs, I also had a sort of paganism around that. Um, I viewed rising signs as more important than sun signs, by the way, and I've got Scorpio rising signs. I was quite obsessed with Pluto for, for, for during that period. I was occasionally interested in things like Taoism and Buddhism and Hinduism, and occasionally like getting my hands on whatever sources I could, mainly Penguin Classics books or something. Um, I trying to get an understanding of those faiths and uh, that's probably partly because of that influence, probably partly because of the influence of Linda Goodman and her, her view of what, who or what Jesus was but I gradually came to understand that Jesus was not God in human form he was uh, a human being an enlightened human being as I stood at the time much like the Buddha uh, and that's how I started to view that also around this time I stopped praying <laughs> uh, on the understanding that whatever is best for me personally, or for the world in general, uh, is something God would work towards anyway, so he doesn't need us to ask for it. <laughs> and also partly, I suppose, because I realise asking for shit just makes you frustrated when it doesn't happen. So I stopped praying. Uh, then began a time in my life where I stripped bare my beliefs of all superstitious nonsense. I stopped believing in astrology and tarot cards and that, and I just... Um, became a lot more rational in my religion, I suppose. Um, and a period of my life which was more syncretic. <laughs> um, I started viewing all the major world religions as all true in different ways. Um, it depends how you interpret it. Uh, I could certainly see, from my understanding through Hinduism, I guess, how there could be one god with many faces. And, uh, So that polytheism and monotheism can both be true depending on how you look at it. <laughs> I even started to understand that atheism or theism could be true depending on how you look at it because God is nature and you could just view it as nature. Um, and I started understanding that around the subject of people like Jesus or the Buddha or whatever, the differences of opinion could again be just different ways of interpreting the same truth. Jesus could be a, an enlightened human being like the Buddha, and uh, if that's the case, you could see that uh, you know God is in all of us, and but perhaps a figure like that could represent that as a shining example. And so you could see how some would view him as God, but then you could see how some would view him as not God because he wasn't; he was just a man like the rest of us. Because God's in all of us anyway. So that was my understanding at that time. <coughs> Around this time, I'd say, are the first times that specific pagan or Hindu deities started to really call to me in a big way. Uh, weirdly enough, when I was young, maybe because I was a moody goth kind of person, maybe just because I'm very philosophical and like contemplating things, um, I used to quite like funerals. <laughs> I used to find that there were good times to reflect and ponder and philosophize about you know, life and death and the afterlife and stuff, and I used to like that about them. I got quite drawn to the figure of Anubis in the Egyptian pantheon. Uh, um, uh, at this time, perhaps more just like Anubis is pretty fucking cool. But I suppose uh, it, I linked that to my positive experiences of funerals, this funerary deity in, in the Egyptian pantheon. Uh, 
uh, started to resonate on some level with me. Um, but more powerfully of all, uh, the figure of Shiva in Hinduism started to resonate very powerfully for me. Very symbolic to me of the the cycle of uh, creation, the cosmic cycle, if you like, of destruction and creation, particularly in that form, uh, the dancing Shiva form, um, which is in a circle, as well, <laughs> um, which is the a creation dance by Shiva, the destroyer. So, you know, <laughs> and I got that figure in at this point in my life, many years ago, and I still have it, uh, of the dancing Shiva. Over time I got a lot more philosophical and a lot more stripping away uh, any supernatural element to this, a lot more. I started to realise that uh, that there's no such thing as a soul. Uh, <laughs> the consciousness um, how do I explain this? Your personality is in your brain. It's all in your brain. Consciousness may be hard. I didn't believe at that this time that consciousness could be explained materially, but that it was a, a thing that existed, because it's just an awareness. Um, the consciousness is kind of everywhere, and our individual consciousness is actually an illusion, um, created by a physical form. Uh, but actually what happens is we partake in consciousness, which exists everywhere. <laughs> this lovely kind of panpsychist idea. But, <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I guess I had less and less use for like individual religious ideas and it became more just kind of a philosophical pantheist, panpsychist person. Um, shortly after this I married a Catholic, <laughs> but um, I was still a kind of pantheist. Um, I. There's an interesting point though, and this happens here before I went atheist for a little while, while I was still a pantheist and stuff, it was the time I prayed to Thoth. <laughs> it's just one isolated incident where I just decided I needed to pray to a personal deity of some kind. Uh, by this point I didn't feel that the Christian God was something I was very comfortable praying to because of the various negative associations of Christianity for me personally. I mean, by now I was definitely bisexual, definitely aware there was some gender issue going on with me as well. Uh, these sort of things make you feel a bit like, you know, fuck Christianity. But, you know, <coughs> um, one time, I don't know what it was, I think I'd lost something or something and wanted to find it. I, I wanted to pray to a deity to help me. Um, and I just decided on Thoth for some reason. <laughs> the god of knowledge and writing in, in the Egyptian pantheon. And Thoth has remained an Egyptian god that I feel particularly fond of um, and particularly resonates powerfully. I've learned things about it that make Thoth seem even more awesome to my eyes uh, since, you know, like how this seemingly unassuming scribe of the gods actually secretly in some stories in Egypt is the creator. <laughs> and I quite like that. <laughs> and very powerful. <laughs> I quite like that, that thing of something, some thought seems unassuming but is actually very, very powerful secretly. <laughs> um, but yes. Yes, then I went atheist for a while. I kind of realized, I mean, my whole belief at that, up to that point had been based on consciousness and how it can't be explained by the material. And it just suddenly became apparent to me that yes it can <laughs> um, it's like waking up from a, a, a dream or an illusion really that you kind of think well if you take in set data from the outside world and interpret it in order to be able to act on it if an organism does that how can it not be aware <laughs> and this whole thing about you know well, it can seem like you're aware but not be aware of the whole fucking philosophical zombie thing it's just like well that doesn't make any sense aware is aware of course there'd be an experience along with it <laughs> um, so I demystified that whole consciousness thing and in the process of that just went oh I'm an atheist <laughs> I don't believe in anything supernatural